This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. Yeah, it's exciting to downs. see how, you know, things are improving and it, it is, like you said, it's, it's amazing because we can just instantly bond to other women because we've had this common experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Every woman has had that. Not every woman has had a baby, yeah, but pretty yeah. much every woman has had a period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so. true. We, we can find <laughs> right. a baby. Yeah, absolutely. So, well. Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Hey, everyone. We're so glad that you're joining us here today at the Zulu Podcast. We have a very special three-peat guest. Yes. Yay. Woo-hoo. Cody Hello. Sanders of Mixers fame. Cody, this is the first time I've got to be with you on a Zulu Podcast, but you have been here many times before. Yes. I have. I'm so, I feel so lucky to be able to be part of this, you know, every year and women, International Women's Day. And Meeting. Jocelyn, yeah. I know I'm excited that we get to finally have a conversation here. Yeah. 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 Cody is, of course, married to our fantastic Trevor. And mm-hmm. I have, I, I mean, I follow you on Instagram. I feel like I know you, like we have a parasocial relationship, but yes. we've never actually met. I know. We feel like we know <laughs> yeah. each other, but now it's, <laughs> yeah. now it's official. official. It's actually mm-hmm. happening. Um, but yes, we are excited to celebrate International Women's Day. We're going to talk about some very important women's issues. Yes. We're going to yes. get into later. Mm-hmm. I'm saying important like this. Um, <laughs> But before we do that, Cody, <clears throat> give us an update on what's going on with Mixers, what's new and exciting, and, uh, you know, yeah. give, us the, give us the juice. Well, thank you. Yeah, Mixers is just going strong. We're in our a little over four years, um, so we're going into our fifth year soon, and um, we're just trying to change the world by helping one woman at a time, helping them to be able to fill their best so that they can go out into the world and do the important work that they're meant to do, mm-hmm. and we do that through addressing you know, main root causes of hormone imbalance that then leads to so many symptoms that can really sideline us as women you know, one week out of every month or sometimes even more. Mm -hmm. And so it's awesome to be able to be out there and sharing the message that that doesn't need to be the case as women. We should really be able to fill our best every single day, no matter what day of the month it is Mm -hmm. or whatever age or stage of life that we're in. And so, yeah, we love that. And in March, this is the month that we're also celebrating International Women's Day. And um, we're really focusing on a lot of education. We're trying to give back to our community by, you know, donating and sponsoring different events and other things that are helping to just support women, whether it's with, you know, with their health Mm -hmm. or with their education or just, you know, just providing just basic needs, you know, for the women that are in the world. Yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. If you mm-hmm. are listening to this and not watching it, you can't see Cody's sweatshirt, but will you please <laughs> show us what's on your sweatshirt because it's so this cute. This says happily hormonal and that's what Mixers is all about. You know, for a long time, I think people will say, oh, you're so hormonal. Uh, and it's yeah. like a diss, right? Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. people say uh, that. Yeah. I remember that back in high school. So rude. So rude. But everybody is hormonal. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's, you know, our hormones basically. We have hormones. Right. We all do have (laughs) hormones. And so why not, you know, turn it around and make it something as a positive thing. So Mm -hmm. we're happily hormonal um, at Mixers and we're Mm -hmm. trying to spread that happiness all around. Yep. That's a great pivot on a a, a formerly derogatory, like pejorative. I love it. Yeah. Definitely turn it around. And the products taste phenomenal. And oh. I'm not just saying that. Like, I look forward to drinking them every morning. That I'm is like, true. Yes. That is true. I, we, we sampled <laughs> this treat. on, on mm-hmm. an episode. I can't remember how many months uh-huh. ago, but it's delicious. Thank it's you. It's very, very good. Thank you. Well, Her Greens right now is our um, product that's on sale this month Perfect. because of, you know, right because of St. Patrick's Day. And it has 14 of the most powerful greens around the planet. Mm -hmm. And we do somehow make it taste really delicious. You're not feeling like you're drinking your backyard grass. You know, it's something that you're going to look forward to taking in every single day. And that's the whole thing. It's, you know, we all know we need better nutrition. Mm -hmm. We take our supplements, but it's really hard to remember to do it every single day. And it's not an an enjoyable thing to do every day. So that's what we try to do at Mixers is make health easy and fun and delicious and effective. Mm -hmm. You guys definitely do that. It's so fun to follow them online. Always gives me 
me this little like, oh, thank you. Perfect. I know your Instagram so account happy. is really and fun to follow. Thank it you. is. It's very, very positive. positive and yeah. Colorful and uplifting. <laughs> yes. And I'm just like, I want to hang out with those girls. <laughs> yeah. I want to get my happily hormones going on. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Well, yeah. join yeah. dream come true. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are hanging out. Right. Yep. Thank you. Love you girls for your support. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we have a lot of things that we want to talk about today. We're going to start with some Poo News. We each have an article. Suzanne, Mm -hmm. why don't you go first and start with yours? Yeah. So when I first read this headlines, I was like, hmm, interesting. So here in the Poo News, a woman was booted off the flight for using the toilet too many times. So this was pre-takeoff. She's going too many times. Too many times due to an upset stomach after a trip to Mexico. Oh. Like that hasn't happened before. Right? I've been there. <laughs> yeah. right? I have been there. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was like, are you serious? Like, how could they really like kick her off? But as you read the article, they did have her uh, deplane before mm-hmm. it took off. And they were just concerned because I guess she was going back and forth so many times. It was, it was a Canadian Airlines. Mm-hmm. And um, so basically they, they kicked her off because she was going too many times. Um, they were concerned, I guess, that maybe she was possibly going to get other people sick. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse mm-hmm. me. <clears throat> so they, she was deep and then they told her to come back the next day. And then it gives you a little bit of in, uh, some little pointers. Like if that happens to you, make sure that you're going to have your passport and your documents, your wallet, like all, all those kind mm-hmm. of things. So um, yeah. So I guess apparently that can happen, which is kind of shocking. Well, can it? <laughs> on the one hand, I get the, <clears throat> the airline's mm-hmm. perspective. Like we don't want to endanger yeah. the health and safety of the rest of our passengers. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. it's not like they said, we have a test for you to take. Let's just make sure that this isn't viral. I mean, right. if she's in Mexico, that's common. You get traveler's diarrhea. You right. come home with Montezuma's revenge. Like this isn't <laughs> totally out of the range of normalcy. Uh-huh. So how, and then they told her to come back the next day. How did they know she's not sick the next day? Like, they don't care about the passengers tomorrow. They're only today. If yeah. I were her, I'd be really mad. Yeah. I'd be like, are you I kidding? Just... <laughs> I, she probably like, has, she's a, she was a journalist. Yeah, exactly. you know, she she has a life. She has an right. agenda. You can't kick me off just mm-hmm. because I have the shouts. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's ridiculous. <laughs> In my rush off the plane, I left my money, my travel. Oh. Can, yeah. So I yeah. side with you, lady on plane. It's not something you can ever even foresee. So to even think like, oh, yeah. be prepared with all right. of these things. I mean, that would be great. And it is a good lesson for all of us to try right. to remember to do all of that. But I know for me, you know, when I've been on the plane coming home from Mexico, that's when it hit me. You yeah, know, it's right. like I wouldn't have been prepared. <laughs> I had no idea what was, right. you know, coming my way. And so, yeah, poor lady. But I guess on the one hand, I, I get it. Like, yeah, right. public safety and health. But mm-hmm. still, come on. Like, yeah. I don't Danelli know. Has, <laughs> that can't be the first time limit. you can't There's encounter a limit. that. You know, yeah. so many times. That's a tough one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the next one, this article is entitled, what is the best way to pee? Hmm. Now, immediately I have an opinion on this, a very strong opinion on this <laughs> yeah. because this I've been, is for women. This to is pee. for women. Okay. And okay. so you let's know, clarify that because I have been yeah. crafting my technique for 43 mm-hmm. years. I don't know about <laughs> you guys. Oh yeah. But I am a hoverer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I always thought, okay, this is great for a couple mm-hmm. of reasons. A, I'm not touching the seat, mm-hmm. which usually has pee on it and who yeah. knows what else. And right. it's just gross. And B, it's like a wall sit. It's like a mini quad Getting a little mini exercise workout. in, <laughs> right. you know, in the okay. public bathroom. However, this article says that squatting or hovering is not great because sometimes that can lead to you not fully emptying your bladder, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. can lead to Two. urinary tract infections yeah. and mm-hmm. um, other negative things. And then didn't it say that the best way to go to the bathroom is standing? Sitting or standing. And I'm like, hmm. okay, well, you Standing's can't. Standing's not really an option. very practical. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, at least not in America. With the yeah. kind of toilets we have, mm-hmm. I just don't. I mean, I'm imagining that. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it and let you know. I <laughs> do like just. Yeah, I've like, never seen a place yeah, where you can toilet. straddle the whole bowl. <laughs> but the whole point for okay. me is to never come in contact <clears throat> right. with right. it. So, so I, there's just, I just don't think that's realistic. There's going to be splatter. I don't know, but. There's going to be like a in Asia, there. they have the trough, you know, the mm-hmm. squatty. That makes it a little ground, easier. So you yeah, can a little healthier. I can see that, but mm-hmm. here it's not going to. Yeah, they're going to have to make toilets like less tall. You know, for mm. most women, you know, there's no way that we could get into a full squat and still be able to avoid touching, you know, the porcelain. Yeah, so, so yeah, I don't know how we make that happen. Although it is true if we are in these different types of positions, even if we're just sitting on a toilet, mm-hmm. you know, that's why they have those little um, stools that you can put your feet on. Because yeah. even if we're just sitting, we're not in an optimal position in order to ep- 
empty our bladder. And there are a lot of like recurring um, infections that happen with okay. our urinary mm-hmm. tract and things like that. Um, and we don't always put two and two together that that's something that yeah. we could definitely change to help improve that mm-hmm. for ourselves. So I know there's a lot of improvement though that we can make and good things Zulu's out there trying to make, you know, right. we're, make we're, a difference. We're bringing these issues to light. That's right. Making people I, aware. I do. I mean, there's always that argument like, you know, Men get to pee standing up. Oh, they're so lucky, blah, blah, blah. It would be, I mean, there are tools to Mm -hmm. help us pee standing up. It'd be great if that was more normalized. Like I would love to pee standing up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. Yes. I mean, and they have devices and stuff, you know, but like who's carrying those around with them? I know. (laughs) Why would you want to? I know. Because you don't want to put it in your purse. It's kind of gross. But I got one as a gag gift and I haven't tried it yet. So, okay, guys, my promise to you. Hey, I'm going to try pee standing up with no help. And then I'm going to use one of these things and I'll return and report. Can't wait to find oh, yeah. Can't wait to hear all about it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so lucky. In honor of <laughs> International Women's Day. <laughs> oh my what gosh. Did, well, what did it conclude? Did it conclude uh, that? It, well, uh-huh. to pee standing up. Okay. Um, or it says, sitting allows the pelvic floor muscles to relax, okay. which reduces pressure on the urethra and allows mm-hmm. smooth voiding. Okay. So sitting mm-hmm. is more optimal than squatting or hovering. Mm-hmm. But I mean, how cool would it be if we could just stand? <laughs> Very convenient. Yeah. We'd have to really change our everything about oh, like what no. we wear, how things are, you know, different. designed in the bathroom. <laughs> You'd have to take you know, off it your would, pants completely. Yeah, it would be tough. Oh, but, I hadn't even thought yeah, about that. Right? You'd have to not wear pants ever. Right. But yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, this is this is fascinating. It says, wouldn't it be nice to pee? Wouldn't it be nice to stand to pee when faced with an impossibly dirty public toilet? You can actually stand, which is surprisingly effective for women. It will take you a bit longer than sitting, but you will be able to eliminate the same amount of pee as you would sitting down. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, We're going to have to you practice. Know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that was fun. That- <laughs> um, we actually have, you know, sometimes we like to give updates and tell stories on some of the... Um, you know, the people that are directly affected by the yeah, toilets the that we're able to build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Our, our recipients. Um, and so we have a great story that we want to share with you today from Laxmi. Lakshmi is 42 years old. Her husband is a taxi driver who earns a meager income. Their house is located in the slum areas at the outskirts of Hyderabad, making them vulnerable to insects and snakes. Lakshmi has two girls, who are 11 and 15 years old respectively. Lakshmi expressed, Without access to a toilet, women in our slum are vulnerable not only to inconvenience, but also to physical, sexual, psychological and emotional abuse. Lakshmi continues, It is worse when we have menstruation or diarrhea. Her daughter Nitya expressed, It was very difficult for us to stay in here without a toilet. Many times a feeling of insecurity haunted me and I would refrain myself from going to nature's call for a day or two. I would not eat or drink water on purpose for the fear of having to go outdoors to relieve myself. My sister and I often go early to school so that we can use the school toilets. Many women and girls in Lakshmi's community are more vulnerable to abuse, attack and ill health, affecting their ability to study, work and live in dignity. Today, with the help of Zulu, they now have a toilet at their doorstep that facilitates safety, dignity and good health. The family happily expressed gratitude to Zulu. You have brought smiles on our faces. We are healthier, safer, and without fear of abuse. A toilet to our family is a social, cultural, and emotional necessity of well-being for ourselves and our children. Well, that's something that we've heard before, right? When yeah. when women don't have access to a clean, safe toilet, they're vulnerable. They're at risk for so many different mm-hmm. things. Right. I, I just cannot imagine stopping myself from eating and drinking j- just to avoid having to go to the bathroom. I know, right? Like, the unfairness in that mm-hmm. is staggering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's the, almost survival though. It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. that's their way of surviving this. And it's so sad. Yeah. It's yeah. Very so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Just because like, you know, like the article said, she has the two teenage daughters mm-hmm. too. So then it comes to their menstruation cycle mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole other issue that comes into play, which I can't even imagine. Cause it's not right. fun to go through that. Yeah, as no it is when what. you have a toilet yeah. nearby. Yeah, when you, have, you have all of this mm-hmm. hygienic, you know, mm-hmm. all of these things that are helping to support you. But to be mm-hmm. in a situation trying to handle, you know, all of that kind of mess, 
it's impossible. You know, they can hold it for two days. They shouldn't, but they can do that. But as far as like menstruation, mm-hmm. there's nothing they yeah, can you do can't about that. that. Yeah. So man, I, I feel for that's these ladies, so, but yeah. Yeah. That's why it's so fantastic for these recipients to get this because it makes such an impact on mm-hmm. so many levels for their safety because, you know, the times they're attacked or psychologically, mm-hmm. just the fear. Mm-hmm. And then also one thing that I hadn't thought about is that also there's like snakes and yeah. just like creature, you know, bugs and stuff. If they go somewhere nearby, Mm -hmm. that's more in nature. Like, Mm -hmm. can you imagine? (laughs) I mean, seeing a snake. Yeah. It is, Mm -hmm. it is Mm life-changing. Like it's, it's wonderful to hear those stories and you know, it's a reminder of how lucky we are, but it is, you know, a reminder to people who might be listening to this. This is what we're doing. This is why we're here talking about these things is to provide psychological, emotional, physical safety to Mm -hmm. people that don't have it otherwise just for being human. You know, right. it's not like they're trying to do something crazy. They're just trying to go to the bathroom. Right. right. Yeah. It's amazing. So mixers on the marketplace, <laughs> check it out, yeah. help someone else. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's all kinds of reasons right? Um, to, you know, to get involved and to help people with the most basic need. Basic, mm-hmm. right. Which affects every person on the planet. Mm-hmm. So, so true. Yeah. Well, so speaking of like snakes and mm-hmm. insects and having to do your business amongst them, yeah. I think you have some experience with that. <laughs> I actually do. So that's why I feel for these ladies so much because I mean, I obviously not to the extreme that they've had to deal with it, but you know, as a teenager, I did a survival program. Mm-hmm. I was out living off of, you know, nothing, just living out in the desert for four months. And, mm-hmm. um, and that was something that we had to consider. We had scorpions, we had mm-hmm. spiders, we had snakes, we had things like that. Now we weren't in danger of being attacked, you know, by another human being or anything. But there were some things where it's like going to the bathroom was much different experience for me as a woman than it was for the Mm -hmm. men that were surrounding me. And so we had to think about things like not only is it safe where we're going or is it private where Mm -hmm. we're going, you know, a guy can just go (laughs) around a bush, you know, and it's, it's, there's a whole other, you know, we have to just think about a lot more. Um, and especially when it is that time of the month and we're menstruating, you know, it's just a lot of things to try to figure out. And so I I just think as women, we're just really tough. We're just so amazing. We're able to be so adaptable. And I think that's something that commonly around the world, no matter where mm-hmm. we live, um, we all have that kind of superpower within us. I love that we get to celebrate International Women's Day because I think it's something that together we have just a, we have a shared experience. We have mm-hmm. shared that are so similar and it, it really can bond us. And so even though our circumstances can be so different, depending on where we live in the world, we should feel so grateful for the things that we have the conveniences that we enjoy, but we should also just be there for each other and find ways that we can help to support our sisters who are living in situations like we've just read about Mm -hmm. and just heard about. And I just, that's what I love about, like about not just the podcast, but obviously about Zulu and how just talking about this, having these kinds Mm -hmm. of conversations can get that awareness out there. There's things that yeah. you guys have just talked about today that I, you know, I, I didn't know that these things were going out and on in the world. And so it's inspiring me to think of how many other ways I could be trying to help, you know, right. Mm-hmm. The women that are in this world. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to, um, my friend Nirja that lives in India. Mm-hmm. We're going to be interviewing her soon. And she, they just uh, did a, a extensive report. It's specifically about menstruation mm-hmm. in India. And they went to 17 different, um, states and they kind of just compared how it was different amongst like Christians, Muslims, and Hindus oh, and just the yeah. stigma around it. Yeah. And um, yeah, so they're making great strides to just like break down that stigma and talk about it more. And they're getting different, um, they're getting the boys and the men involved mm-hmm. as well, which is you huge. Have to. And, you have yeah. to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to the general manager also of their organization and and we had this great chat and he's like, the fact that you and I are talking about this right now, Mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't uncomfortable for either one of us, you know, it's like, it's huge. So it's exciting to see how, you know, things are improving. And it it is, like you said, it's it's amazing because we can just instantly bond to other women because we've had this common experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every woman has had that. Not everyone has had a baby, Yeah, but pretty yeah. much every woman has had a period. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> so, true. We can, you can bond right. in pain. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Incredible. If, if anyone has listened to this before, they know I talk about my little girls a lot. Uh-huh. Like it, it's yeah. just us. We're this little team of women and uh-huh. I'm very open with them about yeah. everything, yeah, about periods, right. about mm-hmm. all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. And this was a couple of months ago. My youngest, she just turned nine. She said, mom, is being a woman fun? Mm-hmm. And I was like- yeah, it is. That is 
an astute question. And mm. I am not a hundred percent sure how to answer that mm-hmm. yeah. because there are things about it that are obviously not fun. Mm-hmm. Like it is, mm-hmm. there is some inherent struggle that comes with being a woman. I mean, mm-hmm. we have all of this stuff going on beneath the surface and, you know, men have things going on too, but there are things unique to us, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just looked at her and I said, babe, it's not always fun, but it's always awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> that's a good one. It's always great to uh-huh. know that you have the power to do a lot of cool things. You can make people. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we right. get to make people. It's right. pretty great. And <laughs> um, create humans. <laughs> yeah. Like I want her to look forward to the things that yeah. she is going to get to experience as she, you know, goes through puberty and then, mm-hmm. you know, goes off to school mm-hmm. or, you know, all these things. I want her to look forward to becoming a woman mm-hmm. because I don't think I felt that quite as much growing mm-hmm. up. It was, um, you know, the path I saw was maybe a little bit narrow and I, I saw that it was hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You or know, it was taboo to talk about, you know, yeah, I had, that's more of it. Yeah. I had three older sisters. You'd think I would have known everything that had to do with being a no. woman because of them, but no, we weren't, we didn't talk about it. And then anything that I did here. So I love that you're doing this with your daughters because it's so important. It does. Mm-hmm. It just, starts with having conversations. And the more yeah. we have conversations, the less taboo it is. And the more that these this next generation of women, as they start to grow up, they're going to have just this positive outlook on what it means to be a woman. So yeah, is mm-hmm. it easy? Is it always fun? No, but it's awesome. We love being women. And it's there's so many things that we can do to help support ourselves with our health and with just our environment and with the people that we surround ourselves and just our attitudes and all the things that can help just make even those really tough yeah things, Mm -hmm. make it a little bit easier. Just normalizing the things that are normal. But I think you're right. There's Mm -hmm. so many taboo topics Mm -hmm. when it comes to women, our our health, our experience. You know, I grew Mm -hmm. up with women and there were so many things about pregnancy that I was like, why did nobody tell me that? I know, right? (laughs) I feel betrayed. (laughs) Like, why did, yeah. So a lot of stuff that goes on there. But Mm -hmm. but you're right. Normalizing these topics and having these conversations and realizing that no matter what you're going through, it's probably totally normal. It's yeah. so true. It's a lot of things are common. And so we can all like relate. But the what I love to teach women is that even though it's common, it's not always normal. And so having a conversation and just understanding that if you are struggling in some area of being a woman, that having a conversation, the right conversation with the right person can really help to kind of change everything for you. And so, you know, when I first started doing podcasts, we have a podcast in, um, when I was first doing it, I was getting censored all the time for Mm. saying things that, you know, like using terms like period or, um, uh, menopause. That was the biggest one. I was like shocked about wow. because, yeah, menopause. I got, it was too censored sexual. For yeah. I got oh censored for that. It's too sexual, you know? And Is so, there anything sexual it's, about menopause? It doesn't sound yes, fun. There can be. Okay. Absolutely. But <laughs> you're not censored anymore, right? No, that's okay, what I was just going to say. Gonna say, say is that it's been it just even the yeah. last five years. Wow. There has, wow. it, we have come such a long way. I mean, mm-hmm. just the things that I was trying to, you know, I was trying to communicate through social media or on podcasts and whatnot, and I would just get shut down, shut down, shut down. And now I feel like it's, people are more open and they're mm-hmm. willing and not just women. And that's what I love too, is that there's so many women who are learning more about their bodies and about, yes. you know, all of these mm-hmm. things, but I love seeing the men in their lives mm-hmm. also care to yeah. learn. And so I think that's, that's going to help make us. their lives a lot. It really does. You know? mm-hmm. Let's be honest. It makes everybody's life <laughs> so better. They understand. And yeah, yeah so on. care for mm-hmm. the women in your life that you mm-hmm. love and and give them the, you know, the education and the support that they all deserve. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, well, oh, sorry, go I ahead. was just gonna say it's just when you're talking about your daughter and just all these things, like um, you know, we've come a long way. And I just remember being in Florida and driving down the highway with my daughter, and she was maybe like nine or something, and she saw a, a woman on a motorcycle. And just to like, and I had never thought, and she was just like, what, mom? And she's like, girls can ride motorcycles? I was like, yes, absolutely they can. (laughs) So I just love that like enthusiasm of her being so, I just, I'll never forget that moment. I was like, absolutely. There was a realization there, like a level was unlocked. Like, oh, we can do that too. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that that's, um, that's great that we're in this, this timeframe where that's happening more and more, you Mm -hmm. know, and that girls get, get the, you know, they can. Yeah. They can do anything. That's right. So true. Well, I love the distinction you made, Cody, about common versus normal. Mm -hmm. You're right. There's a lot of common experience. That doesn't mean that it's normal or good Mm -hmm. or healthy. Mm -hmm. So having a woman in your life, or it doesn't have to be a woman, but someone who has, who can speak to that experience Mm -hmm. and help you through something, no matter what it is, is 
it's just huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having women in your life that you can trust and support you. It's so true. And hopefully we all have that type of woman in our lives. But, you know, as somebody who has a, a podcast and you guys also have a podcast, that's what's so great is that so many of us now have access to these types of conversations and this type of information because of what's now available, you know, Mm -hmm. through the interwebs. And so it's just, it's amazing. These uh, girls, I'm excited for them to be able to grow up in a world like this where they can really, you know, learn about their their bodies and how Mm -hmm. unique they are and how beautiful they all are and what is their full potential, like what's possible for them as well. Well, I want to listen to your episode on menopause because oh, it sounds we have like a lot. I have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We talk about menopause quite a lot, uh, awesome, as well yeah. as every other stage of every life that a woman goes up. through. And no matter what she's going through, we talk about it because, well, yeah, there's nothing mm-hmm. off limits, right? nothing too taboo. And I also, I just, my, um, it's been interesting because I've actually now learned some things from my daughter. <laughs> yeah. <good. laughs> Which has been because things have been more open mm-hmm. that she's learned more. And she's like, Mom, you didn't know about this. And I'm like, No. Yeah. <laughs> <She's> like, shocked. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I it's love great. that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> well, you guys, this has been really, really fun. It's yeah. been great to have you on here again, Cody. Thank you. you know, I'm sure we'll have you on again in the future. I hope so. Thank you for coming to celebrate International Women's Day with us. Yes. Happy and International yes, Women's absolutely. Day. <laughs> <laughs> we hope wherever you are, you are doing something to celebrate either yourself or the women in your life. And uh, yeah, all the girl power to you. Yes. All right. Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, Zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at Zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.